Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever part of the world you are joining in from. Thank you so much for logging in New Normal, where change is constant. From the last uh, few weeks, we have been exploring different areas of uh, life. And uh, we've got some motivational uh, speakers uh, from uh, various industries. And you know they shared uh, their uh, piece of uh, personal life and story. Many of them are very inspiring. Uh, which otherwise uh, would not come up in a public uh, media. These are free-flowing conversations that we continue to have. And I'm very fortunate to have such uh, people agreeing to talk to us and meet us in this uh, platform. And yet another uh, inspirational speaker, motivational uh, guru, I should say. I've been uh, watching him grow. Uh, and also, I have grown manifold uh, in the many years that we have been in touch. Uh, I'm uh, talking about Mr. Raja Krishnamurti. Uh, he is fondly called as uh, Kitty. And he's a well-known personality uh, in many circles, whether it is uh, movies or management uh, consulting or uh, even corporate circles. Many of us uh, know uh, Raja very well. Thank you so much, Raja, for uh, being part of uh, New Normal. Absolute joy, Bhaskar, to be with you and with all the youngsters today. Yeah. <clears throat> And Raja, is the voice what I all right? Sorry, is, is the voice coming through all right? Yes, yes, loud and clear, Raja. Thank you so okay. much. All right. Yeah. Uh, today we have audience from different parts of the country and some mm -hmm. outside the country as well. Okay. And uh, as we discussed earlier, uh, this is a special episode for youth, okay. and uh, these are uh, testing times for even adults. And uh, India uh, is uh, celebrating demographic dividend where mm -hmm. uh, percentage of young working population is more than uh, percentage of non-working population. Mm -hmm. And we are celebrating this uh, with a lot of uh, aplomb. However, COVID, China, you name it, there are so many challenges and obstacles that are coming in the way. Right. Um, especially <clears throat> uh, when it comes to uh, youth, uh, a particular statistics really uh, caught my attention. Mm -hmm. It says uh, every month, close mm -hmm. to a million or mm -hmm. uh, one and a half million youth are celebrating mm -hmm. their 18th birthday. Can you imagine? So this okay. means uh, it's a huge number. And uh, that would also mean as a corporate uh, India, uh, we mm -hmm. need to find jobs for them. Apart yeah. from driving license and many other eligibility that 18 years of age brings in, job is uh, another uh, large part of it. Uh, and not just for the economic reasons, but also to be meaningfully engaged in life. Right. Um, whether it is a formal sector where only uh, less percentage of uh, people are uh, employed or mm -hmm. a l large uh, informal sector where mm -hmm. uh, a big portion uh, is uh, earning their livelihood. I think uh, being occupied in a venture, either uh, their own venture or working in somebody else's firm is, is yeah. a big uh, uh, you know, requirement uh, in these times. So today's yeah. topic, uh, as we uh, uh, you know discussed earlier, it's self-reliant youth <clears throat> right. from self-esteem to self-efficacy and these are uh, psychological terms in common language if we have to say it's uh, the concept of i am uh, mm -hmm. the strengths that i carry the areas of improvement that i am aware of uh, where mm -hmm. i need to improve uh, uh, and develop what feedback i need to seek from whom how do i work on it so this is the journey of uh, youth I, mm -hmm. I work with youth. I have majority of my career. I've spent time uh, in uh, interacting with them. And you uh, as well, Raja, you have inspired so many of us youngsters. Uh, so I just wanted to start this uh, shout out to you, uh, the kind of service that you do uh, for uh, you know young population. I think it's phenomenal. And how did this uh, happen in your life? I know you, your passion is uh, different. You started out as a corporate person. Uh, from uh, JB uh, Institute, you graduated, you got into HR, then uh, in uh, manufacturing setup, you have worked uh, in places, and then suddenly you came into film industry. So how did this uh, career choice and you know orientation happen as a youngster for you? <laughs> so you know that the, the answer to this question will by itself be a separate session. Okay, so I'll just briefly say that uh, doing multiple things, artistic things, creative things, 
And at the same time, uh, working through leadership positions, taking responsibility. And in all that, being uh, fascinated by, uh, concerned about, and involved with people was very much a part of life, right from childhood, I would say. So I wrote my first plays, directed stage, then when I was just 13 years old. I've been into dramas from my age of seven, eight. So that's one part of it. Been a school, uh, you know, kind of class and pupil leader, college union general secretary. So leadership has been part of me. But uh, 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 in all these things, the common factor is my fascination about the journey of life and the amazing uh, gift of uh, being a human. All right. So I dive deeper and deeper into that. Uh, so it takes various, in terms of roles of life, various forms and shapes. Uh, this reflective, you know, kind of uh, inquiry into life makes me as a thinker and therefore into a motivational speaker, fascination with people, human resource kind of specialized person. And of course, my creative urges, be it in the world of painting or acting or doing films or directing. And the only thing is, uh, I do whatever I want to do. I'm a bit of a rascal who gets away in life. Most people have to choose something <laughs> and do that. But, you know, I, God has been kind, I would say. Yeah, I think uh, uh, that's uh, the humble humble self of yours uh, talking. I know uh, there is a lot of hard work behind what you are saying uh, and thoughtfulness. That I've always seen you being very mindful of what's happening around you and uh, settle yourself into the new normal, if I can say. I know when we invited you in my previous job in Vishakapatnam to motivate uh, nearly 1,000 plus uh, alumni of ours, uh, you came in and uh, there was no mic or sound system that could cater to such an open uh, uh, you know, space. And you adjusted and you quickly improvised on the fly. And that's the Raja I know, uh, someone who is really down to earth, who works with what you got, not demanding you know, things uh, uh, out of life. So even uh, in the recent past, when I started interacting with you, uh, the minimalist in you really spoke to me. Uh, you, you are uh, someone who, uh, you know, keeps your uh, needs really less so that you can, uh, you know, uh, give to uh, many others. There you go. I think you already touched a beautiful point, which is otherwise would have come a little later, uh, which is about defining needs of life. And you are right. Life actually requires so much uh, little really. And if you discover that, you become so rich and so wealthy automatically. So we'll talk about that at some point of time. Sure. So to start the conversation, uh, we have a few questions for you. Uh, okay. In fact, uh, there are so many of us online, uh, nearly uh, 70 uh, odd in uh, just Facebook alone and rest of them are on YouTube. So uh, okay. without much uh, ado, I'll just quickly jump into the first question. Uh, this is again on behalf of youth uh, who are uh, you know going through this tough time. When everything around me seems vague, impossible, uncertain, how do I move forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good question to begin with. So uh, I would begin by asking some very fundamental questions and two sets of questions in that. Uh, one set of questions is uh, related to, I need to assess whether this is a normal or abnormal situation. Of course, it's abnormal. Then say the question is, is it more of an individually affecting one? locally affecting one, globally affecting one. Because then the responses I need to dig in are, deep, are different. And then the third interesting question that I can ask is whether by a manipulation of our management of time or by a management of quantity or by a management of quality, can I deal with this? OK. Because remember that in our world of what I call as the material reality or objective reality, time, Quantity and quality, these three things play a major role. For example, if you just take in the corona lockdown and all that, the way we spend time earlier versus the way we are spending time confined at home is completely different. Uh, the world of quantity, the kind of amount of, you know, kind of going out that we used to do, external travel that we used to do, things that we thought we required, that kind of drastically changed. We are choosing to live with something lesser. And many people would say, you know, in terms of the quality of life, for some people, actually, it has improved, saying, hey, you know what? I never discovered this joys of, you know, being at home. But for some other people, hey, I'm not going to the restaurants. I'm not going to the party. I'm not going to the birthday. I'm not going to my office. I'm not meeting my friends. 
quality would have changed. So this is the other part of it. So I think first, it is uh, useful to address this because these are what I call as a clinical needs. And then if once these are the clinical needs part of it, you normally land up getting some logical answers. Then you have this other challenge where the kind of change that comes in, like in the current times, it is not logical because it has never been experienced before. OK, then we have to ask a more significant question. Is this a controllable matter? Is this an influenceable matter? Or is this purely an experienceable matter? I think this is a very important question to ask. Because in our life, we've got these three circles, our circle of control, which incidentally is less than 2% of our life, any which way. Then our circle of influence, which probably would be about 10 to 12% of our life. And then we have this 80% of life, any which way, which is our interacting, interfacing faces of life. OK. So I think once we become clear about that, we need to step down to a deeper reflection, which is the question saying, in these situations, how do I move forward? Maybe you've got to ask a question. Because moving forward, by definition, means I've got to make a progress in the external reality. Because forward, to me, is in the external reality. Maybe you need to ask a different question. Do I need to move inward? rather than forward. I think that is the most important shift. We've got to ask this very beautiful and empathetic question, which is, in this current situation, do I need to move inward and discover a lot more of myself, rather than just hope to move forward, which is my normal propensity in life about growth, about progress, or whatever. Zindige mein aage badho, all right? Waar ke come up in life. That's a normal terminology. And we got so used to that. Nobody has told us, go inside yourself. Nobody has said, dive deeper into yourself, which is very unfortunate. They think that that's philosophy, that's spirituality, that is due after your age of 50. Bhaskar, I think that's a very, very wrong kind of a perception. You know, it's something like this. Understanding yourself, which is all that we are talking about, right. you know, it's something like, uh, you are the only person with yourself throughout your life. And therefore, knowing yourself is such an important thing. So when people say that, you know, this is philosophical and you can do it later in life, I ask this question. Suppose you are planning to travel to Bangalore from Bombay. OK, Bhaskar? So when yeah. will you start planning? After you reach Bangalore or before you start from Bombay? Before I start. So for the youngsters, in the journey of life, when should they become reflective and introspective about life? When they are young and their right. beginning of journey is taking place or at the end of it. So I would say, my dear friends, young friends all over there, this is a beautiful golden opportunity for the journey inward. Don't worry for a bit of time. Don't worry about the preoccupation of zindagi mein aage badna hai. Mm -hmm. Ye, this is such a fantastic opportunity of rather than getting preoccupied with moving forward, going inward and becoming a deeper, having a deeper understanding of our own self. This is a golden opportunity, God-given opportunity. Maybe Corona, from that point of view, though it's not a blessing, it's a path breaker for us. There's silver so, lining in every dark cloud. As no, it's, it's a huge gift at one level. Now, you may say, Raja, what does that mean? What does that mean, diving deeper into you know oneself? You may call this building self-awareness. In Indian terminology, the phrase that is used is Atma Gyan. In Tamil, we say Tannai Unarvadu, to know oneself better. And what is the benefit of this? So from there, we can come. When you become more self-aware, three, four interesting things happen. First one is you understand the difference between proactivity and reactivity. You become a far more proactive person. The second important thing is you become so much more sensitive in life. Because whatever you're granting to yourself, you will grant to every other soul around, every other human being around, every other creature around, every plant, every tree, every element of environment. You would say that, hey, you know what is the same life energy in that that is in me. So I respect, I accept, I collaborate with every element existing in life. You become so much more sensitive. 
The third one is you become very principle centered. You know, principle centered when I talk about in India, we use a beautiful terminology, dharmic way of life. And dharma is such a beautiful thing. Drayatiti dharma, the one principle which holds everything together, which means a sense of balance, a sense of appropriateness, a sense of righteousness, all that. And finally, finally, when you become more self aware, there is this beautiful surplus mentality that comes in. Because with whatever you have, you have this feeling that I have enough. I have enough to make a beginning. All right. So these four qualities of proactivity and sensitivity and this principle centeredness, dharmicness, and this surplus mentality suddenly give for you an access of yourself which you have not discovered so far. So I'm requesting all my young friends use this golden opportunity to become more reflective introspective and if there is a session required on self-awareness separately basket that's a deal between you and me for these youngsters we will perfect. do that all right perfect having said I have that a question uh, yeah. before we move on uh, raja yeah, sure. uh, see uh, i'm just thinking of a, a metaphor where uh, i'm sitting inside a car and right. uh, the world around me looks very foggy yeah its visibility is very low right right and the only thing i could see is as far as my headlights can reach right right that's a metaphor i'm imagining uh, right. for youth who are listening to this uh, show uh, right. so how can one become surplus mentality when they are in that kind of a situation right i think that would really because, help them to yep. reframe right yep. so uh, uh, the, the first point is the fact that you are in a car and the fact that you had a destination in front of you that you are supposed to reach that is your preoccupation right now. The reality is the challenge that you are facing is the challenge that the whole world is facing. For right. nobody, there's a destination right now. So is your challenge something so very peculiar? Or do you now recognize that it's a, a, a global reality for every person? All right. So you may right. say, yeah, that could be. But you know, at this point of time, doesn't it affect me? I'm saying, my dear friend, do you realize that it is affecting you? Yes, which means you are very much sensitive and you are uh, able to feel your feelings. Yes, that means you are very much alive and very much intelligent. Yes, that's a gift, man. Let's mm. begin from there. The True. fact that you are alive, that you are intelligent and that you can think about life. Let's begin from there. All right. Absolutely. So that's why it's an opportunity. OK, the question of dealing with the target, we will work on that. Let the mist clear a little bit because it's not just about you. It's about so many others for whom this is a non-controllable reality. True. So in this, the right choice to make is, can I define what are my controllable factors and can I start making movement? And that mm -hmm. movement can be number one, about my mind, therefore my thinking, then about my emotions and about my feelings. And as a result of that betterment of my mind, then can I make my physical movements and the moving forward? I think that Absolutely. beautiful rearrangement one needs to make. True. And also it ties in with what you said earlier, moving forward versus moving inward. Moving inward. Uh, and the choice is not there to just stay there in, in yeah. a foggy environment. You know, a truck can come behind you or uh, you may run out of your way. You know, uh, uh, fuel, uh, battery may run out. So before you may, run, anything... you may run over another human being. You may run yeah, over that's... a road that is crossing the road. You may run over something else. You may go and right. crash against a wall. You may crash against a lamppost. So I'm right. saying, pause. Uh, uh, let me ask you a very simple question to all my friends over there. All of us have also a scientific bent of mind. We appreciate scientific discoveries, the aeroplane, the rockets, the computer, all of that. For example, you know, the automobile vehicle, fantastic, you know, great invention of life, isn't it? Apne to zindagi mein hi bolte hai na, zindagi mein aage bado, come forward in life, waar ke la munukwa. Why did that inventor of automobile, why did he put up a reverse gear in that? Ever thought about mm. that? Very simple, my dear friends. There are times in the journey when you've got to pause, when you've got to stop, when you've got to go back to make a better journey. This is an opportunity to stop, pause, and go back to make a much better journey. 
this is a gift let's get it first all right absolutely having said that let me not be just philosophical about it let me come to one other practical part of it because once you become clear about that there are two possibilities that you got some plan of action emerging in your mind or you are still left with tentativeness if you got a plan of action emerging for yourself then i would say get into action get into action in terms of choices of escalate and ask for help from a higher level hmm. exceptionalize do something very different from the way you have done before experiment try alternatives flip the whole thing but do something which is very very different or i would say uh uh i would say extend your arm and just become a beggar for a short time and say yaar koi to madad kar de be shameless enough to ask for help simple and straight okay i think if there is an action requirement and therefore you need support get down to doing this the other thing is i'm saying if you don't think that there is an action possibility now there is a very interesting other canvas and in this canvas contemplate you will actually find that there are four five other kind of pathways your earning path may be probably blocked now but there is a learning path there is an experimenting path there is a volunteering path there is a offering sharing path there is a collaborating path all of them are still waiting i'll give you the example i'll give you two examples because let this not look theoretical two friends youngsters that i know one of them is a very strong social activist so i was asking him because i knew that he was working somewhere it was an it company and there is a you know whatever kind of things happening he was on contract the contract has been terminated so i said what are you doing at this part of time you know what he said you know there is so much to be done sir i said i see what is it he said you know what pulam peer the thoilalar that means the contract workers temporary workers workers who do not have what you call as a backbone of a support pulam peer the thoilalar you know there are about uh, a few hundred people in and around our area the government has announced some schemes for them but most of them do not even know about it so me and my wife what we are doing is we are going house to house tabulating these people giving them the government form helping them to fill it up so that they can get the aid from the government so we have decided to do volunteering work because there is something meaningful that we can do Very nice. what an attitude there is this other girl she was a psychology student and she was into the final year examinations are not taking place she is very upset because that is related to career and all that so she was talking to this other friend of mine again a very bright youngster and she said you know i'm very feeling very depressed and these words like depression get used but you know what they are really saying is i'm very concerned and talked about it so he said what's happening so she said you know this is what it is i don't know what to do i said so he asked her so when you don't know what to do normally what you try to do so she said i don't understand when you don't know for example you are looking using your computer you don't know how to operate something what do you do she said i go for a google search i see <laughs> then he smiled he said that means there must be a lot of people wanting to know a lot of things what you can do is whatever you know about psychology can you make them into 3 4 minutes capsules and start mm. putting it out there the same girl in a matter of 2 weeks started creating 2 minutes small videos of how to do small things very efficiently how to yes. clean up your place how to organize your desk for children school children college children now she's enjoying it that's what mm-hmm. i call as you know doing something which is out of the box all right rather than being preoccupied with that one targeted job which you want mm-hmm. to do fine we'll come to that can you become a value adder of life that is the question and right. my dear friend there are many things i'll give you a third example because i'm very tempted to you know kind of bring this example to tell you the practicality of this you know we know swiggy we know zomato and all that but have you ever heard of a chai service which is of the swiggy pattern again it's happening in a lower middle class locality a youngster mm. goes on to building contract jobs and he unfortunately lost his job but he was part of our volunteering group and so he thought about it the only shops which are allowed to open are tea shops and you know restaurants we can give uh, packed food services so he found out an idea for two or three of the streets around he decided he went around told the people because again in those localities people go to the chai shop to get their tea they don't make it so much at home typical 
you know, kind of mm. uh, uh, lower, uh, you know, kind of income uh, groups. And so he told the people, because everybody has got a mobile. He collected the mobile number. He said between, let's say, 6 and 7 in the morning, I do the chai service. And he created mm. six, five, six types of chai. Masala chai, adraka chai, you know, tea with sugar, tea with sugar, tea with a lot mm. of milk, whatever. He says, mm. all that I need to know is at what time you want delivery. He has become a tea supplier of multiple choices. And the right. act started just three weeks back. He says, I'm doing something useful. So the Perfect. willing, a willingness to go out of the box, do something. I think, I think this is what you uh, alluded to as uh, abundance mentality or abundance yeah. mindset. Yes. Yeah. Not focusing on what I don't have or what is not available rather than what, what do I have and how do I make it available? Yeah. So what happens is my sense of self-worth is coming down because I'm not doing my job or I don't have a job. But that's because of your definition that your job is that job. Mm -hmm. I'm saying you are a job doer, but you're a value creator primarily. So as a value creator, do the earning pathway or the learning pathway or the experimenting pathway or the volunteering pathway or the offering pathway or the collaborative pathway. You will find your breakthrough somehow or the other. Yeah. This definition of job is really nice, you know, value creator. Value creator. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. The word perform, Bhaskar, I want to clarify to all my youngsters. It consists of two parts. The first part is per, as per. Form is expectation. Perform means fulfilling expectations. If you mm -hmm. are able to fulfill somebody's some expectation, my dear friends, you are performing. We are performing. Let's become performers, value adders. Wow, that's nice. Excellent. Superb. And uh, I think it's a good uh, place where we can switch to the next question, Raja. Sure. Um, this question uh, is about how do I face rejection while searching for a job? And there are a few other questions on the uh, chat window similar to that. You know, uh, I'm not getting my job. So how do I go about doing it? OK. You know, to all my young friends over there, uh, the opening statement I want to make is there is a difference between acknowledging a situation and accepting a judgment. When you say that I am rejected, I'm cautioning you, don't accept it as a judgment about you. Be watchful. You acknowledge the situation that in this current situation, Compared to myself or me, somebody else has been found by the organization probably more suitable for whatever reasons. And as a result of which, I don't have a job, which I thought probably that may come. But that doesn't make a judgment about me. I'm continuing to be what I am. I think this is the clarity. The rejection is, at that point of time, a decision related to Whatever that organization or that management or that selector or that interviewer thought was a better choice. It had nothing to do with you. You are valuable as we are. I think let's get this fundamental in place first. Do not allow judgments. You are your the biggest companion and the confidant of life. And you got to tell yourself, I'm here because God or whosoever has a purpose of sending me out here. And I got not just a task, I got a mission to complete. And that mission is making this world a better place before I go, before I depart. Right. Jobs cannot decide. Job interviews cannot decide your value. You are too precious, my friends. You are too precious. OK. So in life, let's recognize there are no promises. There are only possibilities. OK. So let's get sure. these fundamentals in place. I can tell you repeatedly about my life. The first time I contested for the general secretary position in the college, I lost. First time I proposed to my girlfriend, she said no. First time I tried to become a management consultant, I was rejected. Every one of them. That is the truth. So what? It doesn't matter. So what? It doesn't matter. It's only a situation. Don't convert a situation into a freezing point about you. That's the first, I would say, recommendation. So what really is happening is I have the potential. I've not converted my potential 
into a possibility and the possibility into an opportunity. So that connect needs to happen. I think that's the most important thing. So do a very objective analysis. I would always say, do an objective analysis. And you may ask, how do I do that reworking? And I'll give you an idea about how to do the reworking. Assume that if you had got the job, what could have been the reason that the job would have come to you? Assume that you were chosen for the job and not others. What could have been the merit or reason in you by which it would have come to you? And what is the gap between that you and this you that you have? If you are able to reflect very deeply, you will get some insight. What I call as the capability gap. Or what you may mm -hmm. call as the potential gap. Or what you may, what I may call as the, the missing link. So let's, for the convenience, just call it as a missing link. Because it's not about this job. Even to another job, to another opportunity, maybe that missing link can make a difference about you. Right. Maybe it could be a physical attribute of how you dress up. And sometimes, you know, you may dress up high, you may dress up low, whatever. It, but you make your assessment. It could be an intellectual thing. It could be a conversational style. It could be a confidence that you show. Whatever, make an objective assessment. If you're not able to make that assessment, take a help of a friend or a confidant or a coach. Find out. Then you have what I call as the missing link. Now comes the interesting part. Once you're the missing link, there's a ladder, a bridge to the future that you can create. And this bridge mm -hmm. has got five steps. Or this ladder has got five steps. The step number one, ground step, is today. And the step number five is the step called future. So we are creating a, a, a ladder, a bridge to the future. So what do we do in step number one? Step number begins with the what I call as a 3D factor. The first D is discipline. The second D is devotion, and the third D is determination. Because you identify the missing link, now you've got to work on that missing link. And for that, discipline is required. And discipline is simply enabling and doing the right things, preventing and prohibiting doing the wrong things. Conserve your time, conserve your energy, conserve your focus. That's the discipline I'm talking about. Don't waste your time on all too faltu things. Don't waste your time on social media. Don't waste your time on entertainment, which is meaningless. Don't waste your time on you know spending mega bucks into the IPL and all that crap. Focus, mm. discipline, and focus. The second one I'm saying is devotion, and the word devotion is very important. Devote means D E D hyphen V O T V. Vote means you make a choice. Devote means you become choiceless in your commitment. What a beautiful terminology. You become choiceless in committing to become better to achieve that missing link. That is the point. That kind of devotion. You allocate time. You schedule your you know kind of things. Focus on that and build the capability. And the I third. I love one, that. Yeah. Devotion. D word. Choiceless. Choiceless in your commitment to become better. Which leads yeah. you to the third one, which is again a D. D termination. Termination means stop. Determination, you will not stop unless you have broken the jinx of that missing link. Discipline, wow. devotion, determination. I can tell you, my dear friends, any one of you in that missing link area of yours, even with one factor, if you work on that in a matter of a couple of weeks, you will find magic in yourself. And I'd love to give this idea to you because I think that makes a personal huge difference to me. So what happens? So step number one is therefore this focus of the 3D, which leads to capability building. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment I'm going to become more capable, my doability improves. So discipline helped me for focus. That built up my capability. My doability improved now. The moment your doability improves, start experimenting with things in life. Do things mm -hmm. for the sake of trying it out. Become a doer. Don't become just an intellectual processor. Start experimenting, showing to people in different ways. Start sharing. So as you start this experimenting and doing, the second C builds up. Discipline builds up capability. Capability experimenting builds up confidence. Because mm -hmm. now you are not only know, you can do and you can show. So you become a capable and confident person. Now, as you become a capable and com confident person, I've got a secret to suggest. And the secret is 
become a volunteer and offerer offer to people free for them to enjoy your capability hmm. offer to institutions offer to organizations saying that i would like to come to work with you i don't need any expectation in terms of you know whatever compensation whatever my minimum facilities are required i would like to work with you for about a month and i want to add value because you are doing something become an offerer hmm. whether it's an organization whether it's an ngo whether it's a corporate social responsibility wing of a organization become an offerer volunteer of some kind as you do that something else happens you now move from a capable person to an experimental and confident person into an offering and volunteer person now you are starting to be identified as a value add person now the moment you become a value add person something changes in life opportunities come around you you don't chase opportunities opportunities start orbiting around you that magic starts happening people look for you or even if you choose to go towards something some other magic kind of happens my dear friends as much as i'm saying this easily this pathway is not easy but i'm saying so what pain precedes possibility it's a painful pathway but remember that pain precedes possibilities choose this pathway it's a mountain climbing do that with determination all right so remember again discipline so as to develop focus capability building capability building towards experiment experimenting building confidence confidence building volunteering and offering offering building value add position value add position creating opportunities build this beautiful ladder to success ladder to achievement ladder to evolve ladder to you can you're becoming what you can in your life all right so i would say don't pick up the judgment of rejection acknowledge the situation and identify the missing link work on that perfect great thank you raja this ladder to success is really really inspiring i'm sure uh, i'm getting a lot of comments on the window uh, where people are uh, connecting with uh, these ideas and concepts i think it's okay. really wonderful there's one question from kashmir i just wanted yeah. to uh, display it here uh, this is from mr ajas okay he is asking there are so many people who are uh, educated but they are unemployed how do we mm. uh, handle that yeah um okay um i'll just know, read the, up the question for you uh, sir i want to say you are in in our kashmir here yeah. is a lot of education but unemployment is more than education now you yeah. tell us what we should do yeah so it's, it's a very beautiful question ajas achhi question aapne you know chuna hai so in this uh, you know go back to the first thing that we talked about is this a local phenomena is it a personal phenomena or is it a very contextual phenomena which means there is so much which is around which are all not within your uh, manageability so the, you ask the next question whether in terms of time or in terms of location or in terms of quality and quantity you can do something about it okay so are you finding a solution for yourself which can then lead to finding a solution for kashmir or are you finding a solution for yourself only being in kashmir so start asking mm. these kind of questions because once you become a value adder you may add value to kashmir all right but being in kashmir by itself may not give you the answers right away i'm not even for a moment saying that everybody in kashmir needs to go out and kind of do things or being in kashmir using the internet what are the kind of things that you can do what is it that you can link up what is it that you can collaborate so think about the experimenting collaborative pathway first of all forget about the routine standardized way of looking at jobs look at value add redefine performance as per fulfilling expectation thoda sa alag sa aap sochiye and i'm willing to share my mail id to baskar baskar you can share that with ajas i'm going i'm i'm willing to have a conversation with him i'm willing to have a deeper engagement because i think my friend definitely deserves a clarity on this answer but the first question is are you trying to find a solution for kashmir or will you become a solution to the challenge in kashmir by become a value adder ask a different mm. question okay perfect and uh, that reframes ajas, the entire situation yeah if there are 100 ajas who say hey you know what i want to get a solution to kashmir aur kuch ho sakta hai something else is possible true 
I think with that we'll move to the next question, Raja. Yep. What personal habits helped you overcome obstacles in life? Ha! Ah, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, to my friends, all these young friends, I want to tell them, uh, it's yeah, habits is one very important part because habit is an indication of your self-discipline. But I want to tell you that it's first of all a combination of two things. As a human being. My foundation is in my beliefs and my beliefs, they direct my behavior and my behavior is a combination of habits, relationships and the sense of purpose in life. Okay. My behavior is a combination of actions indicated in my habits, in my relationship indicated in the way I treat people and the sense of purpose, how I look at value add in my life. Okay. So first I will talk about the belief. And there are a few things I want to share with you with absolute joy. And I want you to think about them, reflect. And if it makes sense, I want you to experiment with these beliefs in life. The first and foremost thing I'll tell you. The, my dear friends, I don't know how many numbers you are there. You could be hundreds, you could be 200, you could be 300s, whatever. The very fact that you are sitting there and we are conversing, having this beautiful conversation, I want you to know that you are meant and programmed for success in life. Let's get that fundamental in place. The fact that we are all born as right. a human being are sent into this world by whatever that God or the creator very simply is an indication that we are programmed for a happy life. We are programmed for meaningful life. We are programmed for joyful life. You know why? Because we are created as human beings in the whole drama of creation where energy becomes form. The energy could have become a plant. I could have become a plant. I could have become a blade of grass. You and I could have become a goat, a cow, a donkey, whatever. You mm -hmm. and I could have become a bed of rock. We became human beings. You know why? Because whosoever that creator is, whether it's that Allah or the Holy Spirit or Paramatma, whosoever, he put his own creative ability into us and set us into this world. Let's get this right. fundamental in place. We are valuable entities in the creation, number one. Therefore, my first belief is it's very difficult to fail in life, not the other mm. way. Right. It Absolutely. is very difficult to fail in life. And when you fail, you fail in an attempt, you are not a failure of life. Get that very clear. Right. We fail in attempts. We do not fail as entities. We do not fail as human beings. There's a that big difference part. between I am a failure and I failed. Absolutely. I'm a failure and my attempt failed. Very clear. Yeah, my, my attempt, attempt failed. Yes. My attempt failed. My attempt failed. Perfectly okay. Hmm. Which only means that I need to learn a little more. I need to become more capable. I need to have one more go. Whatever. I am never a failure. This is the first belief about myself that I have. Okay. Hmm. Which means I'll try and if required n number of times, as long as my sense of purpose is very clear. The second one, my dear, 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 dear friends, I want you to pick up this beautiful belief. Simplicity is not equal to poverty. I lead a simple life. Simplicity is not equal to poverty. Simplicity is celebration of life. And there's a beautiful quote by Og Mandino, the famous motivational writer who wrote books like The Greatest Miracle on the Earth and things of that kind. And Og Mandino says, your poverty is not determined by what you do not have in life, but your richness is determined by what you can live without. Mm. Simplicity is a beautiful gift of life. For God's sake, make life simple, uncomplicated. Yeah, I've got 25 shirts in my wardrobe, man. But there are only seven days in a week. Even if you wear twice, you need 14. <laughs> no, yaar, Amazon mein discount tha. Toh, aap kiske liye karid rahe? Amazon discount ke liye kya pehenne ke liye karid rahe? Simplicity. Simplicity mm. is not equal to poverty. The second belief. The third one, I determine my value. Nobody else has the authority or the privilege to determine my value. My self-worth is determined only by myself. My evaluation in situations, my evaluations in jobs, my evaluation in roles may be decided by interconnected people. But that's about a part of me. The whole of me, I decide my value. 
There is no mm. other reference point. I listen to my inner voice. I listen to my antar sakshi all the time. Very important. The fourth important thing, I first choose to be a human being, then I choose to be a successful person. Mm. Between the choice of sensitivity and success, to me, sensitivity comes first. Success can come, it need not come. But sensitivity makes my life a celebration all the time. And finally, the most important belief, yeah, every day, every moment, nature te teaches me one fundamental reality. For every beautiful, bright light of the morning light, there is this pitch darkness of the black that comes in the night. For every species of female created in the world, there is a male species that is created. For every breath of, you know, pulling in the breath inside or taking the air inside, there's a breathing out that takes place. Life is about duality. If there is a hilltop to be achieved, there will be that valley that will collect the water. Collected water of the valley is as precious as achieving the scaling of the mountain. Success and failure is the duality. Never get trapped in that. Go beyond success and failure. Go beyond right and wrongs. Go beyond strong and weak. Continue the journey relentlessly. That's it. So these behaviors, these beliefs have determined my behaviors of life. So to deliver into the world, there is this mechanism called the body. So I pay respect to the body. I exercise every day. From the age of 12, exercise workout has been part of me. All right regular part of me. So first pay attention to this machinery with which you will deliver in this world. So that is the body. Second, take care of the mind. In the mind, two things about your thought process. And for God's sake, know the difference between data, information, knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Today, in this whole internet world, social media world, we are living in a data dump. You don't need all that dump. Mm. You don't need that. Become very choosy about the kind of data that you choose. Convert data into information by looking at patterns. Always research, study, Google search. Don't go by these memes and opinion being flung around and all that. Go deeper. Mm. When you do that, information becomes interesting because patterns can be seen. Now, when you know how to use the information for positive purposes, then it becomes knowledge. Mm -hmm. Information by itself is of no use. It will make you an intellectual fart. <laughs> use information to create positivity in life, in relationships, in society, for yourself, for others, to create value. Then that becomes knowledge. Then finally, to know the balance between the external knowledge and your internal knowledge, that is wisdom. Balance that all the time. Mm -hmm. So if this can be done, then your mind becomes strong. So body becomes healthy, mind becomes stronger and clearer. With that, add your sense of purpose. What is sense of purpose? There are these two things. Like in your two hands, carry these two things. Your goals will tell you what you want to get in your life. I want to get a job. I want to get a salary. I want to get a position. I want to get respect in society. Sure, thank you so much. What do you want to give to the world? That is your sense of purpose. Mm. What do you want to get? My dear friends, unfortunately, the world has become a place where the human being wants to get, wants to get, wants to get and forget. I'm saying for a change, learn to give and to give and to give and to forgive. We need to have that balance. So that uh, actually is a wonderful thought and uh, segues into the next question by Nupur. Um, this is something I have uh, got many a times. So you told about value addition, but nowadays youngsters are more attracted towards money. What is your insight in it and how much money matters in our life? <laughs> Nupur, such a good question. Money is a means of transaction, okay? I mean, let me ask a very blunt and honest question. And for me, I'm a vegetarian. Do you know if you sit down and calculate for today, for me, for Raja Krishnamurti, with all whatever level of comforts of life, for me to have a decent vegetarian food, all right, today, three times a day, 
all right do you know how much i need to spend actually completely for me my wife and probably for one more visitor who comes in do you know how much i need to spend out of the calculation therefore i know it would be roughly closer to 500 rupees which means for 30 days in a month i need 15000 rupees baki sab jo hai that is the kudrat you know kudrat ka wo you know it's it's a gift of god hmm. when we know our needs and when we know our need fulfillment can take place everything else in life is a gift and it's a surplus so nupur my recommendation is pick up this anchor of what is your need wo oh, clear ho ja all right and define it very very clearly i mean i'm saying be ruthless with yourself to define your need my hmm. fantastic guide to coaching in life thomas leonard he has this beautiful statement if you don't need you know deal with your need you will constantly be manipulating your life so deal with your need oh ekdam iron out kara do kya chahiye aapke need ke bare mein life mein mm-hmm. once you put that into place and needs can change it can increase but it never dramatically changes you know mukesh ambani can eat maximum of let's say six chapatis if i am able to eat let's say four chapatis he may be able to eat eight idlis i may be able to eat five idlis at the end of it the stomach sizes are marginally different <laughs> he traveling in his mercedes benz and i traveling in my toyota leva we will reach the same destination maybe 10 minutes different from each other when we all go to the grave they will dig 6 feet for every one of us for nobody they will make a special 9 feet kind of a grave money has a place put money in its place in terms of need fulfillment then look at life in its face and smile and say now i am ready i will take you on nupur ab aise banenge life mein aise banenge life mein you will get surprised by yourself good question beta i love that question money fact, uh, yeah she she actually uh, is a uh, change leader in one of the government itis so and uh, she deals with lot of these youngsters and uh, i think her question could be from the way of how do i tell these youngsters uh paise ke piche bago mat uh, yeah, i'm just exactly. yeah picking that's it up from there yeah so after that i mean whatever comes that's perfectly okay but let that not become your preoccupation let right. your preoccupation be this smile on your face and say is duniya mein aur kuch value add karna hi hai let that become our trip and the value addition ke piche when we go i think the money will follow it's not uh, other way around you know I'll, i'll let you off with one secret and I, i'm saying i'm saying it's a secret because even 3 days back myself and meena my wife we talked about and i don't think it's peculiar for me every time we take a decision to give for charity to help somebody i get a lot of requests not that i'm able to entertain all the requests but every time you know and i've got such a heart or mind that you know oh, thoda sa you know it has got its own kind of uh, what do you call that So I'll tell Mina, yeah, Mina, let let's give something, you know. But mm-hmm. believe me, every time we have done that, something comes back some two three times larger, bigger. Every Absolutely. time, yes. I get stunned, I get shocked, I get fascinated, and I tell her, "Kudrat ka itna kuch hai kya? Hamari upar? Is there so much of love of God on us that it anyway comes back?" I'm saying, stop counting. collection automatically happens wow address your needs i'm saying right. that is sensible but after that stop counting collection increases very nice and on the discipline there are few more questions raja would you like to take it yeah so Call me. one uh, one question is about how do i you know uh, stay on discipline is a big word for me yeah. i i felt bondage limited to certain boundaries why is it so the other well, question uh, on discipline is um how do i overcome initial setbacks yeah how do i overcome initial setbacks okay yeah. and then and the third one is uh, what are the building blocks of the first d discipline yeah. good okay uh, ramanan okay so for all these uh, you know kind of there is a framework that i want to give for example somebody said it looks like a bondage okay because the idea of discipline for us is the teacher disciplining us the parent disciplining us hey i say mat karo don't do that do this our discipline in a social system is 
the law and order saying you can't do this you can do this it's like putting a gun and saying you know you better behave this way if that is your mental framework of discipline i'm saying take it off and keep it on the side the word discipline is a very beautiful word discipline is d is equal to 2e plus 2p it's a formula you can take it down okay discipline d is equal to 2e plus 2p letter e letter p 2e 2p the 2e stands for enable plus ensure 2p stands for prevent prohibit so let's take the first case where he said it looks like a bondage i'm asking first of all in which area do you want to have discipline is it about health is it about food is it about money it is about booze is is it about relationship which area are you focusing on discipline okay so ramadan says i want to have discipline about uh, my health about food fine so we have kind of, now let's apply the formula food ramadan says for some reason i'm not able to reduce weight so how do i bring a discipline by which i can reduce my weight or you know have better health all right so let's take discipline 2e enable and ensure doing the right things so when you go to the doctor and you've got a weight problem what does the doctor tell you doctor says please when you get up in the morning have four plates of bajia okay and have at least three bottles of beer that's what the doctor tells you very <laughs> simple you start eating value adding food vitamins proteins carbohydrate to the limited extent avoiding too much of sugar enabling and ensuring doing the right things along with that the biggest challenge in india why we lack social discipline the first part of it we do it all right we pay taxes we get our you know licenses we carry our you know xyz we have our other card we do all that but the second part is a washout in india prevent and prohibit doing the wrong things hmm. we just don't practice that this combination is what will work it is never the first part yaar mai to you know i am eating the right kind of food you know i am eating the right kind of thing but along with that if you are doing also part of what has hmm. to be prohibited discipline can never work so this combination of enabling and ensuring doing the right things and preventing and prohibiting doing the you know, wrong things that becomes the package of discipline suppose it's financial discipline i want to save money and i'm saying all right keep a target that you'll save 15% of your salary 20% now the moment you say 20% you got to say you know in terms of my spending what is the enabling and ensuring doing the right spending preventing mm. and prohibiting doing the wrong spending 75% discount in amazon theek hai let amazon celebrate i am not getting into that mm. hey, this weekend you know we are getting together man once again but we just got together last weekend i'm not dying for too many weekends make your calls prevent and prohibit doing the wrong things put that together solid boss discipline to awesome. honor yeah yeah there's one more practical question uh, from ranjit yeah uh, he says uh, sir i'm not after money but how do i answer my wife's question of what have you achieved in life because people judge oneself by the power position name and fame sure so your wife definitely has got a what i call as a very intelligent point of view okay and um, you want to have a happy life i guess uh, uh, you you respect what your wife is saying and you want her to be your partner for a long time so you want to know find out an answer that can work all right all right so i'm saying that these are very beautiful things in our life where our belief systems and our partner's belief system may not be exactly identical or congruent but i think it's a very beautiful opportunity to do exploration okay so ask begin with this question okay what kind of money one part of it is what the world says about people who make money yaar dus ya kya paisa bana hai yaar ek startup start karke in 2 saal mein usne bech diya uske pocket mein 50 crore aa gaya yeah it happened to somebody it happened to, that somebody becomes your reference point of your life mm. or he says you know what yaar our batchmate remember way back about 15 years back that man is a billionaire man he's a billionaire he's in you know glaxo or whatever he's in vancouver 
he has become a reference point who is your reference point of life mm. so i think between you and your wife you need to decide what shall we have as the reference points of life number one second very sincerely ask what is it that we want for which let us determine how much of money do we want nothing wrong mm. nothing wrong okay what is it that we want in life forget about others others ka to hota hi rahega first commitment that you make is we will not allow our monkey inside the mind to do comparison with others is there an agreeable thing between you and your wife step number 1 all right my dear because now that we have decided that we will focus on our life tell me honestly what is it that will make you happy in the next 5 years and next 10 years next 2 years and i will work towards or we will work towards the first 2 years and then move now agenda became even more clearer list it out completely okay look at the reasonable parts of that okay and have very honest explorations mm -hmm. okay very honest explorations and then still see whether she has a high value or a low value or she think that you are a faltu in life mm -hmm. if she continues to think that you are a faltu in life then i think the challenge is about your relationship it's not about money <laughs> probably <laughs> probably all right focus is elsewhere <laughs> yeah so but i'm i'm only say i'm not passing a judgment i'm only saying i i appreciate because it's a truth for example meena and i we are very different people okay we are very different people but constantly we i ask this question because she has added so much of value in my life therefore i need to give consideration to her point of view right. and then engage with her and however strong and however bitter and however difficult i got to find answers together with her that is the truth true yeah yeah Perfect. so try your best boss kuch ho sakta hai thank you raja thank you so much and uh, we are coming to the last end of our uh, show um, this is a question on um, how do i stay ahead in the competitive world ah so that question had to come you know ye <laughs> apne parents apne teachers apne society apne corporate world itne booze bhar dete hain andar life is competitive be ready life is competitive somebody else will snatch the opportunity life is competitive you know otherwise you will become a failure my god why doesn't anybody teach children young minds soft minds that life is collaborative work along with others for god sake why don't they very simple yeah very simple you know imagine you know just for the sake of convenience let me say that we are all doing this session not you know on the internet but let's say in a live situation and it's a two day workshop okay and in a beautiful resort okay we have let's say somewhere in pune high grounds or whatever high places wherever and we are sitting down for morning you know for our breakfast today south indian breakfast garam garam first class idli that boys bringing that waiter and you're all looking forward to that idli and sambar and you know chutney and all that so he keeps those two idlis in our plate as you pick up the idli i'm saying please pause stop for a minute now this waiter this boy this steward he's the first link to your idli but he picked it up in the kitchen from a supervisor who organizes it on that large plate so the supervisor is the second link but he didn't make the idli that was the chef the master chef who kept those you know idlis from that steamer so he was the third link but you know he was not the only person who did that there is an assistant who ground that uh, moong dal and that rice and all that who did the chutney so he is the fourth connection but he didn't bring it from the shop you know there is an errand boy who picked it up now this way go back until you reach the farmer who sowed the seed of their grain of rice or that yeah. dal do you know what is the number of that link roughly 30th or 32nd or 35th for a piece mm -hmm. of idli a morsel of idli to reach your mouth you are dependent on 35 people in life is life competitive or collaborative collaborative for sure if you count yes. the shirt that you are wearing aapka specs jo hai aapka pen jo hai aapka juta jo hai aapka belt jo hai aapka laptop jo hai aapka daily need jo hai you are interdependent on some 25000 people per day hmm. is life competitive or collaborative for god's sake yes for god's sake 
do not over define life by a situation and context where you think that you are supposed to gain something and you lost something and they would declare that life is competitive these are situations where choices are being made okay mm. if you want to the word competitiveness comes from the word competency was mm. finally the whole world had sports as an amateur act you know why because competition was an amateur thing aapko zyada taakat hai ki mujhe zyada taakat hai it was competition joy amateur activity the day it all became professional that means you make money by a competition super yeah. singer competition olympics competition sports competition landmark yeah. competition shaadi karna competition number of shaadi competition are god's sake yeah <laughs> right hmm. so when this craze of more that arrogance of more arrogance of exclusivity please underplay a little bit in life look at life gently smilingly lovingly and say with whom can i collaborate and make a difference i want you to shift this perspective i want you to become a collaborative minded person this reality that opportunities will be there and there will be multiple people working towards that it will be a reality that will continue but don't put mm. this booza of competitiveness excessively in life because if you truly believe in that your neighbor your own brother your closest person is a threat to your life no mm. It is hmm. not that life is collaborative. All right. Absolutely. So having said that, uh, uh, make sure that you build adequate capabilities to reach wherever you want to, and keep working at it. You will reach there for sure. Yeah. True. Thank you, Raja. Thank you so much. And are, are there any personal examples that you could share of people who did not uh, have the wow. requisite uh, qualification or anything, but they made it really big? and the good thing is you now these people that i'm going to be talking about every one of their phone numbers i have in this mobile phone so i'm going to be talking about people and if you anyone wants to listen to any one of them i'll put them on but unfortunately one of them will not be able to communicate in english so that is the part but let me talk about that kicha krishnan kicha by any chance if you listen to this video or see this video i'm sure you will feel good about life he started with me from the same colony in andheri bombay where i was born and brought up same age kicha or krishnan failed six times in the school he began with me he ended with my younger sister mm. myself then my younger brother vishwanath then kashi and then my sister mahalakshmi almost with my sister why simply he was not interested in studies but he was mm. one hell of a guy full of humor full of talent full of capabilities but just not interested in studies that's it hmm. and he had a great attitude about life itna humorous tha itna humorous tha unbelievable but you know his life was challenged quite a bit they were six children they had you know uh, their dad kind of uh, left home when they were all young they were not able to identify what happened kicha lost his mother at the age of 16 even in those days he had started doing some kind of a part time work to help the mm. family so marriage uh, you know marriage cooking catering services he would go and help out you know cutting vegetables helping things and all that one of his uncles was one of the famous catering you know kind of people kicha the moment he finished his those days we called it ssc right mm. uh, he started doing Uh, a shift job in one of the garment factories in paril dadar mm-hmm. paril okay mm. um and then slowly you know he became you know kind of a not supervisor a senior assistant and then uh, one of the uh, people in our colony he gave him a job and that was a freight forwarding company so he became mm. a dock supervisor dock assistant and then dock supervisor mm. this he was at the age of 19 or 20 at the age of 42 kicha was the managing director of one of the most powerful freight forwarding companies in bombay whoa i'm so proud of my kicha my krishnan friend at the age Excellent. of 40 he was a managing director of a freight forwarding company 
Perfect. I mean, he has been part of my dramas. He has been part of my growing up. He has been part of my Ganesh Chaturthi celebrations. I hold him in great fondness and love. That's the story of Kichar. I am a consultant to one of the organizations where the founder mm -hmm. is a person who migrated from Southern District of Tamil Nadu at the age of 15, mm -hmm. after failing in ninth standard, to come and work in a shop as a shop assistant mm -hmm. with one clarity. And you know what was the clarity? I'm there not to do a job. I'm mm -hmm. going there to learn business to give jobs to others. He said, this is the one Perfect. line I got. Wow. OK. I'm there mm -hmm. to do a job, but not to do a job, but to learn the job so that one day I will become a person who gives jobs to others. Today, yeah. he's the founder managing director of a 4,200 crore company in the FMCG space. Whoa. He can speak in Tamil. He can't speak mm -hmm. in English. But I'm mm -hmm. actually you know, kind of collaborating and writing his autobiography in Tamil. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do about whatever that we talk about competence, capabilities in a generic kind of term. You know what this gentleman had? That mm -hmm. vision that I will become a person who gives jobs to others because I know the value of what a job can mean to a family. I will mm. make people happy to help them by helping them to get jobs, which will make them make their families happy. He was clear um, on what is the value add that he's bringing in. Yeah. The third is a very, very close person of mine who was, uh, uh, when I was the personal manager of Chola Hotel, this particular gentleman came in as a part-time typist because a good friend of mine was his cousin. And he had finished his commerce and he wanted to come and join. He joined me. Then from the temporary typist position, he became an HR department typist, became an HR department assistant. But he had one great quality. Dump him with responsibilities. He will take more and say, what else? What next? Mm. Mm. He enjoyed working hard. So the journey continued. He became a supervisor. I went to Enfield India. He said, I want to come and work with you. Okay, he came to Enfield India. I became a consultant in 1985. He said, I'm coming with you. And then 87, he split because I was not interested in recruitment consultancy. He was very keen. Mm -hmm. And that person, a just graduate, whose communication skills, presentation skills, and all on a one to 10 scale would have been at level four or five, mm -hmm. had one quality, determination. Mm -hmm. And within the next six years, he became the most successful recruitment consultant in the whole of Chennai. And by that time, he made more money than I ever made in a single year as a recruitment consultant. <laughs> wow. I, I feel so proud about him. I feel mm. so proud about him. Of course, unfortunately, you know, we lost him sometime recently. Mm. But otherwise, what you could have dismissed as, you know, one more than one was mm. average. My dear friends, I want you to know that there is something about you which is so special. Give yourself and give life a chance to discover that special thing about you. You will be, we all will be different human beings. Thank you, Raja. Thank you so much. And in fact, uh, there is enough for everyone's need. Right. So I think there's space for all of us. There is no need for feeling competitive and so on. I However, forgot find the thing. value. I, I want yeah. to forget. I forgot one thing, Bhaskar. I apologize. I sure. can't leave this forum without sharing that. Sure. Please go ahead. And this is a very beautiful quotation from Bharatiya, Subramanya Bharatiya. And for those who do not know Tamil writing and Tamil, you know, kind of uh, uh, field in the last, let's say, 100 years. Subramanya Bharatiya was one of the greatest freedom fighters and he was called as the, uh, uh, you know, Desa, Desa Kavi, the national kind of poet. Okay? Poet, yeah. Yeah, poet. And amazing poet. So he has this beautiful quotation about the sense of purpose in human being. I'll quote it in Tamil and translate. It's about everyone who says, what should I do in my life? Okay. So he says, Vallavar Ayrenum, Vayagam Kapavarenum, Vayagam, the whole world, Kapavarenum, you may be the savior of the world for all that you know. Alladu or Sirivarapara Kadai Vaitirupavarenum, 
So maybe mm. there's little banana seller with a tokery on your head selling plantains, bananas on the street. Hey, kele wala, kele wala, that kind of a person. You could be the savior of the world or you could be the plantain, kele wala. He says, it doesn't matter. Why? With a sense of integrity, honesty and value add in life. Mm. If you are doing whatever you are supposed to be doing, when the world looks at you and admires, saying, My God, this man has such integrity. You are much above most human beings. It does not matter what you choose to do. Yes. It matters how you do whatever you choose to do. Hmm. Very I powerful couldn't have words. This for anything. Yeah. You and for the, for the age, uh, I know uh, he died very young. Uh, yeah, he, I think these are powerful, wise words, right, Raja? Of course. By the mm. age of 39, 40, just like Vivekananda, just like Adi Shankara, you know, these great souls, I think they were so close and dear to God, the God that God probably took them away early. But they made such a sense to life. They made such a sense to life. Absolutely. True, true. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Raja. Thank you so much. In fact, uh, I take out uh, your offer to come back again on the show. And there are many people who are requesting. One of them is Nupur. Can we have you once more, sir? <laughs> Nupur, so, eight yes. number of times. Uh, uh, one part of it is Bhaskar is a good friend, so I can never say no to him. And the second thing is I'm saying this is my only trip in life. My only trip in life is to engage, to converse, and to spread the word that all of us are gifted to be human beings and together with that clarity that we are all the same, we are all the same Atma, right. together we can create an amazingly positive celebrating world. That's the point. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for all those who are joining us for the first time. New Normal is a channel where we talk about various issues that are uh, very real to us. And we bring in experts from various fields like Raja. There are many speakers who have come in the past. And there are a few lined up uh, in the future. I'm just going to talk about the next two sessions uh, quickly, Raja. One okay. is uh, Abhay. Uh, he is also a good friend of mine. He just recently recovered from COVID. And when I spoke to him, what really hit me hard is the kind of journey that he has gone through. And also, it, there is a lot of uh, uh, you know, fear and panic around uh, us. And it will be good, worthwhile to listen to him, how he handled this solitude and how he uh, had a disciplined life to come out of it and how his family and friends supported him. This is the next uh, upcoming uh, session on Saturday, 5 p.m. Please do log in. And we have a female uh, leader, uh, an inspirational, motivational speaker who happens to be the India's first and only lady neurologist and neurosurgeon and epileptomologist epileptologist sorry and uh, she specializes in epilepsy and she's uh, above 70 plus uh, even now she practices even during the covid times uh, recently she's a, a cancer survivor uh, fighting all odds she runs a blog she runs a website uh, and she fights for women empowerment and uh, it's a, such a big inspiration for all of us so age is just the number i have shared a platform with her she's an amazing person yes so uh, such wonderful speakers are coming on board. Please do consider subscribing to this channel so that you get the notification on your inbox. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, thank you, Raja, once again. Wish you all the best. And please continue inspiring many youngsters like us. And it's, it's a great joy uh, talking to you.